get fired up about your money, but you can't get fired up about your money if you give up control of it. If you allow somebody else to manage and control all of your money all the time because you're just not smart enough, get smart enough. kick this right off. Let's dive right into the number one thing. That is crypto. So, hey, how many of you are actually doing crypto? Any of you buying Bitcoin? Any of you doing uh, anything else with crypto? Bit, you know, Dogecoin, you guys doing Ethereum? I even drew a little thing. Do you even crypto, bro? You know, it's kind of like that thing. A lot of the millennials, including Mary in my office here, they're always talking about do you even lift, bro? Well, do you even crypto, bro, is the thing for today. Crypto is all over the place. Like how many of you are making money in crypto right now? You guys, you guys crushing it? How many of you bought crypto at $500? Anyone? Thousand? 10,000? 20,000? 30? How many of you bought it at 30? Come on, be honest with you. There we go. We got a couple people coming in. How many of you bought, bought Bitcoin at 60? Come on. I'm waiting. How many of you bought it at $60,000? Any of you? because I know people that did. I know a lot of people, including my best friend. He bought it at 60,000. What, how come they were the experts when it was at 60 and going up, but then all of a sudden when it came down, you don't hear from them. Dude, what is going on? Well, here's the thing, like a lot of people just blindly buy into different investments. I mean, let's, let's be clear about cryptocurrency. Is it around, is it gonna stick around? Yeah, I think Bitcoin, Ethereum, I think you're gonna see some government interference with Bitcoin and its currency because, hey, government doesn't do anything without being in control of your money, do they? I mean, look around, folks, what's going on in China? What's going on all over the place? Is, is Bitcoin really going to be the next currency? And even if it's not the next currency, will it maintain its values if the same thing happens to Bitcoin that happened to gold? These are very real questions, very real things to think about because it will play into the pricing. Because Bitcoin and Ethereum and shit coins and Dogecoin and I, God, there's so many of them, I don't even care. But all of them are based on investor confidence. They're investing because you're investing. They're investing because TikTok is saying, I own crypto. I bought this Lamborghini with crypto. It's investor confidence because there's no fundamentals. Warren Buffett's like, no. Steven, what is your take on Bitcoin and all the stuff going on. It's kind of crazy. It's a little crazy right now. It's going up. It's going down. What do you think? Yeah. I, you, I mean, like you said, I mean, we were doing that thirty to $40,000 range there for about, I don't know, what was it? Three, four months. And then all of a sudden we've broken up. We're hitting up to 46,000. Looks like we're down a little bit. What I'm interested to see is the overall markets had a down day yesterday. We're down today ahead of the Fed minutes that are coming out. So I'm interested to see if we continue to see a downward trend in the stock markets, if crypto is going to finally break that trend and maybe that's where the money goes out of the markets or is Bitcoin going to just continue to trend down along with the markets? Because what I've been seeing is Bitcoin seems to track pretty closely to the overall stock market. If the stock market comes down, it seems like Bitcoin tends to come down a couple of days later and vice versa. So I'll be interested to see when that trend starts to break apart and that'll be telling for what happens with Bitcoin in the future. Well, let's let's go to the audience and see what everybody's saying. We had one over here and I like this one and it's uh, it's no name. It says, I like it's like gold. Uh, no, it's not, but that's okay. Uh, no name said, it's not a currency. It never will be. It's a store of value. That's interesting because, you know, I'll agree with no name here, even though it doesn't have a name and this is coming in from TikTok. I agree with that. It can be a store of value. If you truly believe that it's going to continue to rise for the long haul, it's a great place to store some value. I mean, hey, it's diversify, right? You know, we I get asked all the time. You know, I spent so many years on the Wall Street thing, being the, the high level IAR or you know, as most people know, the financial advisor. And, you know, we didn't have Bitcoins, we didn't have cryptos, but we always had those fly by night investments that were the hot thing. And then all of a sudden they weren't. And, you know, a lot of people tested them out and a lot of people lost, but a store of value, 
So a store of value, you know, can be gold. So in, in that sense, no name said it's like gold. I don't think it's like gold at all. Matter of fact, it certainly won't trend like gold. It won't do the things gold does because gold is tangible. Bitcoin or all these other things, they're not tangible, they're digital. But when we look at it as a store of value, that's a really good comment. So I, I like that, uh, no name, it's a, it's a great comment, great one coming in. Let's see, Avery said, so we got some people that were commenting here from Facebook and also from YouTube that were saying, you know, they bought it at 40 and then we had Bonnie say she bought it at 13. Whoa, whoa. Bonnie probably could go out and buy that Lamborghini that you keep seeing all these people posing on Insta stories and also on TikTok that they bought their brand new Lamborghini. How many of them actually bought the Lamborghini or are just posing on some Lamborghini parked on the side of the road? Well, we may never know. But Avery said, sold my Bitcoin at 40 per our rules. See, Avery said, a, 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 so when you invest, you should have rules for investing. Avery has been around the campfire with us for a little while and she set her rules, her investing rules, which means for, for me, I have investing rules and I did the same thing, Avery, when it popped at 40, I sold. But what I do is I buy when it goes, I buy systematically, I dollar cost average. Everybody know who can tell me what dollar cost averaging is. Dollar cost averaging is what I've been doing with Bitcoin and also Ethereum every week, a hundred bucks. And it's not a lot of money. It's just a hundred bucks. I don't miss that money. If it all disappeared tomorrow, I help. I wouldn't even know. I mean, my cough, I wouldn't even have to go down from an Americano to a, a dark roast. I, I just continue okay. on. So it's $100 a week systematically goes in. I buy at 60, I buy at 13, I buy at 40. It doesn't matter, it's dollar cost averaging. But here's what I do understand with investing. All investments trade off of support and resistance levels, a floor and a ceiling. Okay, Bitcoin specifically, not Doge, not uh, Ethereum. Let's just talk Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been trading between a 30, 29, a 30,000 range and a 40,000 range pretty steadily. Now we broke through the ceiling. Okay, we broke through the ceiling recently and we climbed up to, I think the high was about 47, 48. Now that would have been great to hold it, but I got out just like Avery. I sold at I think just a bit over 41 and I got out and I made great money because I followed my rules as Avery did. So she said she got in at 0.04 and should have sold when it was up for a second. Yeah. So you don't, you don't ever want to look back. You know, I've never met any and, and comment in on this. So DCA is an ex, is excellent advice. Somebody just came in on TikTok. Let's see. We got someone coming in from Instagram saying the same thing, but let's talk a little bit about rules. When you set investment rules, for example, I'm going to buy, I don't know, pick any company. I'm going to buy Tesla at a price and I'm going to sell it when I make 20%. That's a rule. Or I'm going to buy uh, a stock at 10 and I'm going to sell it at 20. That's a rule. Okay. But if you don't follow your own rules, you're always going to lose money. Mark my word. Everybody right now is a goddamn expert in investing. Steven, how many experts do you know in investing right now? Hey man, you just I just log on social media and everybody's telling you what to do. You know, who, who said it best? Kennedy, right? Kennedy, the shoe shine boy, gave him stock <laughs> tips, and Kennedy's like, hell, if the shoe shine boy knows more about stocks than I do, I'm getting out. I love that. Woo! Yeah, and actually somebody just chimed in. So like somebody's putting a lot of I don't know who it is, it just says Facebook user, but they did a great job. And I'm just gonna pop this up and block us about dollar cost averaging. Look like maybe they went to Google and copied it, but they're dead on with what dollar cost averaging is. But then they came in with another comment, and I love this, and I have to read this, folks. So pay attention. They said, Bitcoin is a long tailored investment for me. I bought really low at eleven thousand dollars. So at the moment, we are up above that, and I believe it will continue continue to trend upward. I'm no investment expert, but it's better than what I was getting in my retirement fund. Like that's awesome. Let's talk about experts in the markets. If all of you had a bad heart and you were going to die, if you didn't get something done to your heart, would you go into a gastroenterologist and like say, Hey doc, I need you to fix my heart. Would you go into your regular physician and say, doc, I'm going to die. You got to fix my heart. Hell no, man. You'd go find yourself a heart expert and you'd find the best one. You'd find somebody that knows exactly how to mend and fix hearts because it's the only thing they do. That's what you would do. Well, in this space of world of investing, find somebody that does one thing. I don't mean to pick on financial advisors, but I was one for 16 years at a high level. And we all, not just myself, but all the, the reps that I worked with, all the IARs that I worked with, all the big dogs, all they did is anything their client wanted. Oh yeah, I'm an expert in that. 
Oh, I'm an expert in that. Oh, I can do that too. Oh yeah, you need that? Yep, I do that too. Oh, yep, I do that too. Oh, I'm learning that so I can help you with that too. Why are they an expert in everything? Because they're trying to make money on everything, which means they're an expert in absolutely nothing. Nothing. Find a CFP, okay, a certified financial planner. They're an expert in writing financial plans and they will charge you a lot of money. The more money they charge, probably the better they are. I hate to say that because they don't want to work with a lot of people. They want to work with a select few of the right people. So if you got an advisor, find one that is the right one for your needs and goals. Stop going with a generalist because a generalist, your heart's going to freaking stop. You're going to be dead. Okay. You get the point. If you go with a generalist for investment advice or for money advice, guess what? You're going to be broke as a joke. When you find somebody that knows everything about all these other coins out there, if you ever see the family guy, I love it. Steven, you, we talk about this one a lot. The family guy episode where Peter's going around. He's like, Ooh, piece of candy. 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 Candy. That's your generalist. They just pick up any damn piece of candy they can and they know nothing about what they're talking about and what they're eating. But a specialist goes out there, passes up all that candy, looking for one piece of candy that he wants and that he really likes. Just like myself and Steven, we are experts, utmost experts in privatized banking and the infinite bank concept. That's what we do. And I just have lots of experience with money and so does Steven because we were advisors. So here we go. Someone just put in... Uh, the DEFI, uh, decentralized finance. Okay, thank you. It's an umbrella term for the financial services on public blockchains. I know nothing about this. Primarily, primarily Ethereum. I love Ethereum. Uh, you can do most of the things the banks support, earn interest. Okay, so I, all right. Yeah, I've seen this, but I'm going to be honest with you. I know nothing about it, man. Let's get back to it. So let's talk investing. Tesla. We all know Tesla. We know Elon Musk. We know that when he tweets, whatever he tweets, the stock goes up or tanks. We know that. Shouldn't happen that way. But Tesla's autopilot system is being probed by safety regulators after a series of crashes. How many of you own a uh, how many of you own a Tesla? Does anyone have the self-driving? I mean, that's that's some cool stuff. I want to know if any of you have one of these Teslas that drives itself because that's freaking awesome. Just awesome but they're crashing. So you're sitting back in your Tesla that you paid for that extra driving software that drives itself. And then all of a sudden, boom, sorry, you guys awake now? You just crashed. That's not really, that's not good. It's not good. So who knows what's going to happen there? But you know, if anyone has Tesla, definitely watch that real closely because depending on how these safety regulators and these, these different things happen with that, that's going to hurt their stock. I will say there's no way that can't hurt their stock. It's hurt when Ford had a recall or any of the major automobile deal or automotive um, manufacturers had a recall or had problems like that. That hurt them bad from Honda to Toyota to GM to Ford. So be careful there. Steven, anything yeah. on uh, Tesla? Yeah, Tesla just walks such a fine line because they're on that edge of what's possible and technology that they're always pushing that envelope. But when you push that envelope and you walk that little tight line, things can go wrong real quickly. And when they do, you can fall off real quickly. And it's, um, I think they're doing everything right. I mean, they're coming out with it. They're going to regulate it. They're going to fix it and they're going to get it right. I mean, Tesla is definitely the future, man. It's awesome to see. That I is. just hope that it, I just hope they take a little stock hit around mid November. Cause I have a little bet with a buddy of mine about where the stock price will be, but we'll see what yeah. happens. That might help your cost right, right, right now. now. And one thing I will say about Tesla, and I don't know how many of you are excited for this, but that truck, <laughs> cyber truck, Colleen's uh, husband's going to be buying one. But like, how many of you are freaking excited for that thing to actually roll out? When I see the first one of those, man, I'm going to, just like a police car, I'm going to freaking pull my truck up in front of them. I say, stop your car. I just got to check this thing out. That's a cool ass truck. And yeah. You know, like, listen, like I'm not an electric car enthusiast. I, I probably will never own an electric car. We have a hybrid. We have a Porsche hybrid, but like hybrid I can have because I can put gas in the thing and still drive it. But a full electric vehicle, I just feel like I lost control. I'm all about controlling my money, but I'm also about controlling like my freedom of being able to go somewhere. I just feel like the government or, you know, some all seeing eye, if you will, can just shut that off in an electric car. Man, that cyber truck, I would absolutely buy one of those. You know, here's another cool thing, investing, right? What vehicle can you buy 
that would have the best chance? And I want all of you to answer this. What vehicle can you buy that would have the best chance of not losing money in depreciation? Stephen, what vehicle would you buy if you wanted to buy a vehicle that would not lose value? I want to hear what everybody says here. A Toyota. You'd buy a Toyota. So what kind of Toyota? Let's be, get more specific. I, mean, I, drive a, I, I have a Toyota Tacoma that's worth the same price now than four years ago. Okay. Here Toyota ago. Tacoma is absolutely, if you can look at the history of a Toyota Tacoma, even go back to, I think, the 80s, those trucks have held their value. There's something nostalgic about the Toyota Tacoma that, that will never, ever die. So great one. Who else? It's my, it's my BYOB truck. Even the license plate is BYO Bank. <laughs> BYO Bank. So somebody on uh, Instagram just said uh, a Honda Accord. I would agree. But I think Honda Accords still depreciate quite a bit, but that's a great car. Like if you buy a used Honda Accord, that car holds its value. Same thing with a Honda CRV. Honda CRVs, for some reason, I think they're uglier than shit, but people want them. The safety ratings are super high. So young families, they have young children. They want safety and affordability. So the Honda CRV and the Honda Accord, absolutely. So I like Shauna's like answer. What'd Shauna say? She said a DeLorean. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How come nobody else caught that one? A DeLorean. Of course that car would hold value. Back to the Future set that car in a perpetual state of appreciation, not depreciation. That's a great one. Uh, let's see. What else we got? We got Forerunners, Tacomas, diesel American trucks. Absolutely. Diesel trucks. They are probably never going to go down in value because they need them for work. They have towing capacity. They have torque. Diesel trucks. What else? Uh, a Wrangler. A Jeep Wrangler? I guess maybe. Yeah. Benjamin came in from Instagram, said a Jeep Wrangler. I... I would go with that. What do you think, Stephen, on a Jeep Wrangler? Not a new one. You buy yeah, a new I, one off the wall, you're going to lose money quick on a Wrangler. Wrangler. Maybe an old maybe one. A, maybe an old jacked up CJ7 or something. Yeah. Those things are classics. So more people are coming in with Tacomas. Someone said any pickup truck. I mean, like I bought a G-Wagon, a used one, and I bought it because I did a lot of research on what vehicle can can I buy that would not depreciate. And so far, my vehicle's up about $20,000 over the year, a year ago price I paid for it. I bought it right during COVID. So I got it for a great price, but it's up about 15 to 20 grand on its value. So that those are pretty good vehicles. But again, let's be clear. If you buy any brand new vehicle, let's, let's exclude the Cybertruck or maybe the new VAT, or maybe if you're in line to get the new Z06, like those are probably all selling way over, even though they're a brand new vehicle. If you buy any brand new vehicle, the second you roll it off, it's done. But I'm talking like one to five-year-old cars. Which one can you buy that holds its value? Cybertruck would be a great one. G-Wagons, uh, you know, we'll go with the Toyota Tacoma or Forerunners, the Honda Accords, the CRVs. Uh, what else? Anyone got anything else here? Diesel trucks, uh, maybe a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. So the reason I talked about that is when we're talking about investing, we want to look at we want to look at history, which is what we just did. I did it with cars, not stocks, because everybody has a car. Everybody knows what cars go up in value, which ones go down in value. People know this. So when you're looking at a car, what makes a car hold its value or what makes a car depreciate in value? Number one, it's it's you know consumers, the, the trust the consumer has in the brand and also the vehicle. It also comes down to fundamentals, fundamentals of that vehicle, what that vehicle stands for. Okay. Jeep Wranglers, Toyota Tacomas, like those cars stand for something. Old Audis, like the Ur Quattros, the old B4S fours, those cars always go up in value because they stood for something. Rally cars. Okay. Old STIs from Subaru. Those cars seem to just keep going up in value because they stand for something. When you're investing in any company or any cryptocurrency, please Look at companies that stand for something, companies that mean something to you. You guys got fired up with cars. Get fired up with your investments. If you're just buying a mutual fund because the 401k <laughs> guy said, oh, you should, you should just put your money in this uh, freedom fund. Like, what does that freedom fund have that you enjoy or, or just stand for anything? Like, take some responsibility over your money. Folks, listen, the, fir the first thing you all need to do is get back control of your money. You're so used to giving up control of your money and you're so used to being brainwashed because you are, you're all fucking brainwashed. We all are. You're brainwashed to think that you can't be a good steward of your money, that you're not smart enough to manage your own money, that somebody else has to manage your own money. That is a lie. Stephen, is that not the biggest lie that's being told out there? A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. Nobody cares more about your money than you do. Well said. And I'm going to leave it right that. So start caring about your money the same way you care about the car you drive and the car you buy. You guys got fired up over cars. Get fired up about your money.
but you can't get fired up about your money if you give up control of it. If you allow somebody else to manage and control all of your money all the time because you're just not smart enough, get smart enough. Hell, go to college to learn about money, even though they won't. Te- I'm sorry. Don't do that because they won't teach you about money in college. They'll teach you how to get a job. They'll teach you how to trade hours for dollars. They probably won't teach you much about money except for maybe how to be a CPA or, you know, things like that. The smartest minds in the money space, you know where they came from? You know where they got their knowledge? A mentor. Somebody that was, you know, maybe it was a bloodline. Maybe it was a mentor. Somebody took them under their wings and showed them. Same story for me. I didn't learn what I know about money today in the financial advisory world. Hell, I was tainted in the financial advisory world. I was taught to sell and sell and sell. They made me a great salesperson, but they made me an absolutely terrible, terrible person when it came to understanding how money really worked. So get smart with your money. The cavalry is not coming for you for anything anymore if you haven't figured that out. And they ain't coming for you for your money. So be a good steward of your money. Stop giving up control. Stop relying on other people. Stop conforming to what other people tell you to do and start just using your head like logic, like simple logic goes a long way these days. Devin's asking here from Facebook, what are your thoughts on precious metals? And if you want to say, oh no, I'll get this one out. Precious metals, I I think, you know, depending, it's just like any other investment, it's going to basically come down to how much you pay for it. So if you're buying gold right now, I, I can't say that you're buying high, but you're buying high. But if inflation continues to run rampant before deflation sets in and just everybody that's on this inflation kick, like, yes, we have an inflation problem. Yes, we will continue to have an inflation problem. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be followed by deflation. And if it follows by deflation, you don't want to buy gold. You want to buy U.S. Treasury bonds, 20 and 30 year U.S. Treasury bonds. People are always asking me, where are you putting your money, Chris? Very simple. 20 and 30 year good old fashioned U.S. Treasury bonds. Boring as hell. But you know what I understand? Because, you know, when I say this or somebody goes and asks their advisor, they always say, oh, my God, why would he say buy those? Those only pay 1.8 to 2 percent interest or yield. Why would I ever put my money in that? I'm losing money to inflation. Ah, That's what you think. You are losing to inflation if you compare yield to inflation. But when the whole market tanks, which it will, the Fed will pull interest rates like they did last year, like they did in 2008, like they did in the dot com crash, like they do in every other recessionary period. They will drop rates. And when they do that, the inverse relationship of U.S. Treasury bonds or any high rated corporate bonds, okay, AAA rated bonds, or I just do 20 and 30 year treasuries because they're guaranteed by the U.S. government. The price goes up. Interest rates go down. The price goes up. It's an X just like this. So when the price of uh, when interest rates are going up, the price of bonds are going down. Warren Buffett said buy low, right? Well, Treasury bonds are going down in value. So buy when they're going down. And then when do you sell? When they go up. So when are they going to go up? When interest rates come down. I don't know when that's going to be, but it's going to happen. So that's where I'm putting my money. So gold, yes, I think it's a good hedge. Uh, It hasn't been making a whole lot of sense lately, but I think it's a good place to put it. Uh, And, you know, somebody else said over here on TikTok, and I wanted to make sure I pointed this out because it was a great comment. Uh, Galactic said, stay away from investing. Big money selling. You know, I got to agree with that. Just everybody's asking, what should I invest in? What should I invest in? What should I invest in? Because they're all buying into this FOMO thing, fear of missing out. If you're going to invest, invest in a company that you love that you buy forever. Michael uh, on Instagram bought Pfizer. He bought it at the right price, but he bought it and he probably believes in the company and thinks the company will keep going. So he's in it for the long haul. If you're going to invest money, either invest and just put a blindfold on. Put money, if you, you want to put money in the S&P 500, put money in the 500 and you know you're going to lose, but just put a blindfold on. Don't even look for it. Don't even look at it for 10 to 20 years. It's not what we teach, but I'm just saying, if you want to invest, that's the only way I would tell you to invest. Otherwise, I'm going to agree with uh, Galactic here and say, stay away from investing. If you can't afford to lose money, if you're worried about what's going on, if you think that if you lost 10, 20, 30% of your portfolio, it would devastate you, then do not invest in the stock market. Do not invest in crypto. Why does everybody think, oh, what do I invest in? I got to invest in something. Why? What's the rush? There's no rush, folks. There's just the euphoria that you're missing out on something. You're not. Be safe with your money. The biggest opportunity of your lifetime might be a year or two away. And what is that biggest opportunity? 
Think of 2008, nine. Wouldn't it have been, it wasn't an opportunity for anybody that was in the market because they lost it all, but people that just sat on the sidelines, people that had money in US treasury bonds, my God, they, they crushed it. They had a huge opportunity because they were able to deploy their money and invest. That's what you got to do. Investing is so simple, folks. Don't let advisors and news and everybody else convince you that investing is complicated. It's not, it's logical. Invest in things that you love, that you hold forever. Warren Buffett's web methodology. But also, if you're going to do the long hold to pick the stock, look at the fundamentals only. Don't listen to your buddy saying, oh, I bought this. It's going to go to the moon. No, th then don't buy that. Do the opposite in that case. And maybe he's right and you're wrong, but he's probably going to be wrong more than he's right. Secondarily, you got to be patient and wait for the opportunity. You got to wait. Like there's no rush right now, folks. Like, sure, you put your money in cash. Oh, I don't want to be in cash. I'm losing to inflation not losing much. And if you lost 5% to inflation over two years, you lost you know, purchasing value of your dollar that sat in cash for two years and the market tanks. And then you bought into a market that was you know, depressed or was down 30, 40, 50%. Did it matter that you lost a couple of percent the first couple of years? Absolutely not. I've never met a single person, not one investor in my life, not a single person that complained when they made money, even if they made a dollar but I've never met a person in my life that didn't complain when they lost money, even if it was just a dollar. Think about that. That's logic right there. If you are emotional about losing money, then don't be, don't invest. Well, Chris, what do we do with our money? Well, move it, get around the campfire, learn about privatized banking. My God, learn how to be a private lender, learn how to move your money, learn how to mimic what the banks do. There's no risk in doing what we teach at the front level, zero risk. So, there's lots of ways to make money. So with that being said, folks, if you like that video, make sure you check out this video right now. And also don't forget, subscribe to my channel and don't ever forget to smash that alert button. We'll see you on the next one.